Hey everybody, Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon coming at you with a new nuclear revenge story. Supervisor takes credit for my work. I cause entire production to shut down. Let's jump right in. Hit that subscribe button for daily Reddit stories and join us on Discord at the link in the description below. I started working in a machine shop after I finished school with a two-year degree in machining. Learned all kinds of programming techniques that could make most machines that were less than 30 years old perform moves and output measurements of parts currently in the machine to automatically perform quality control. This greatly increases quality of parts as well as reduces waste and human error. I also learned many tricks along the way to make sure that my work could not be stolen. It's my first day on the machine shop floor, and I immediately noticed inefficiencies in all the machines in my station. We had to manually perform quality control, sacrificing production time, while also leaving tons of room for human error due to the poor quality of measuring instruments in the shop. I'm new and eager to prove I'm worth more than the original pay they offered. I told my supervisor to let me spend an hour to add a line of code to a machine to demonstrate my skills I learned in school that would immediately cut scrap and waste down by a large portion without slowing production rates on the line. My immediate supervisor humored me, thinking I was BSing him to try and brown nose the engineers and lead programmers so I could get brownie points or something. Quick backstory to note, I had zero experience in a production plant and said supervisor had 30 years experience in the field. He had a very proud attitude and genuinely worked very hard to learn what he knew. He was decent to work with, but when I asked questions about some of the basics on this machine, like how to get to the program so I could edit it, he would block my view of what he was doing and get to the end result quickly without explaining the process. Being new and wanting to learn, I'd always ask to have him show me what he did. He always refused and claimed it was his way of securing his job. Anyway, I programmed the function into the machine in about 2 hours 40 minutes and when it comes time to demonstrate the process, it catches a part that is out of tolerance according to the blueprint. I also programmed the machine to output different messages providing instructions to whoever the operator was on ways to resolve the issue if the part couldn't be salvaged or to automatically adjust offsets of the tool that machined the feature that was found to be out of tolerances and rerun said operation and recheck said feature to ensure quality. All of these functions were performed automatically without any input from an operator. This is a pretty magnificent feature to have in production and my supervisor knew that. The supervisor who observed the demo immediately went to report this to higher ups who came to view the new feature I had implemented. As the next part was being produced, the quality check move initiated and found that the second part was also bad and output a message to change tools X, Y, and Z. The managers were incredibly surprised that this was all done on an 18 year old machine and they looked to my supervisor to ask how he figured it out. Long story short, he took the credit and was given a raise on the spot. It didn't register to me that that's what happened until I went to ask if he was going to credit me for my work. He said, yeah, but you gotta put in the time to get where I'm at. It don't matter that you did the job, cause without me, you never would have known how to do your fancy programming in the first place. The managers had left for the day, so I couldn't fight my case right then. The next day, I was planning on informing the managers that I was the one who did the programming to do that. The managers were also former machine shop veterans with 20 plus years in the workplace and refused to believe me. Not only that, they basically yelled at me for trying to steal credit from someone who has worked their way up in the company and learned everything on their own and not from some school. I went to my station even more pissed now, where I was met by my supervisor. He told me that I needed to go around to all the machines that could perform that function and add it to the code. I said, not without a raise. My code saves you guys tons and brings the bottom line to a level that McDonald's qualified workers could produce infinite numbers of parts with minimal loss. He said if I didn't do it, I would be fired. So I faked my compliance and started to change code on all the machines. If you know anything about programming, you know you can make something function a certain way until a certain value is met and then have it completely change afterwards. 
This was my job security. So I set the quality check up on 18 machines the first day, and then the last 30 that weekend, and the managers were praising the supervisor uncontrollably for his innovation. Well, the programs were all set to operate as normal, and do quality checks like I programmed the original machine. However, I programmed the rest of the machines to keep track of a new variable. They would run and self-check just fine, until they reached a random number of parts produced, 50 to 500 depending on the production time of the parts run on each machine, where it would then throw up an error code that would only be cleared with a password I had set for it. If a wrong password was provided, or someone just hit the enter reset button, the machine would take its largest tool in the turret and run it rapidly into the solid chunk at maximum RPMs. I made it so about 65 to 75 hours of production would go smoothly before my job security would kick in. It took three days for the machines to hit their magic values, but when they did, boy oh boy was it magically satisfying. The first machine to crash was making parts for the drive lines of a major motor company. The crash was caused while a new operator was running the machine, who I might add was only hired because the program I made let them hire clueless people into the shop and be able to still produce good parts. When he tried to clear my password code, the lathe started turning at 2500 RPMs with a large heavy drive shaft base in the holder, switched to a huge drill, and ran the drill into the holder, causing the tool holder to be knocked off axis, the part holder and tools to be destroyed, as well as cost the company tons to get someone from the machine's maintenance team out to repair it. After the first glorious crash, I menacingly mentioned to the supervisor, you should check your codes to make sure they're working properly. He went ghost white. Not a second after, three more machines simultaneously crash in glorious fashion. He starts to chew me out, saying I'm in huge trouble, but as he starts cursing, the managers are there to have him go diagnose the problems with his codes. The supervisor, not wanting to admit he stole my work, doubles down and says confidently, I know what the problem is, and walks off to the crashed machines. Not a minute after they turn a corner, more machines start crashing. I just sit idly by and listen to the glorious sounds of my nuclear revenge playing out. A few minutes later, all the workers are told to stop production completely. We are all kept in the shop until they can figure out the problems. This is a 24-hour production facility with three shifts of workers coming in seven days a week, mind you. Our shift is nearly over, and we've all been idle for about seven hours. The next shift comes in, and we leave for the day. I hear nothing from the shop, so I just go in the next day as normal. Turns out, they tried to fire the machines back up during the night shift, and 18 more machines crashed like the others. The plant did a formal layoff of most of the workers the next week as they were hemorrhaging money from all the damaged machines on top of labor paid without any production. We filed a class action suit against the company for unemployment, lost vacation time, dangerous work conditions due to the severity of the crashes, etc. The company went bankrupt from the lawsuits and losses in production and machine repairs. The guy who took my credit was obviously fired and had an article in the paper about him sabotaging the company's production. He obviously told them I was responsible for the crashes, but the company found out that the code to my password program was his name. They believed he did this out of spite because he was refused a raise the previous year and his threats to them after his last evaluation. Sucks to suck, laugh out loud. Edit, to all the comments worried about the innocent workers, they were given two months severance pay on top of being able to collect unemployment for 16 weeks. The severance pay outlined by the lawsuit took into account all the benefits the employees had before getting laid off. I do feel guilty that there was collateral damage. However, most of the employees ended up with the equivalent of about six months paid vacation. So there is a happy ending. I honestly didn't think the company would continue to try and run these machines when all the ones that my supervisor took claim to programming were crashing. That was their fault and greed, trying to make money, instead of fixing the problems before continuing production, in my opinion. So you mean to tell me that in this high-tech workplace with all these machines, that nobody checked the security cameras to see who did the programming? Hmm, that seems a little bit fishy to me. 
but I'm going to give OP the benefit of the doubt, as it is a great story. I want to thank OP for giving me permission to narrate their story and post it on YouTube. You can visit OP at the links in the description below to take you to their profile and the story on Reddit itself. Make sure you visit and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comic Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I ask you to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.